thanks, Stevie, for agreeing to do an interview with Behind the Scene. No workers. Being in Melbourne, Ben, can you tell us what one of your favourite venues are from around Melbourne? In Melbourne? Um, I guess it depends on, like, what size you're talking about. I mean, my my favourite bar to go and watch a band and to have a drink at is probably got to be the old bar, as it has been for years and years. I mean, um, they've, they've housed clowns, like, for years and gave us gigs when, you know, when nobody really cares for the band and allowed us an environment to to perform and have people come down, which I guess eventually pushed us along the way to, to where we are now. Um, and, you know, it's good to, it's really good to remember where you came from and who supported you back in those days. But I mean, some of my favorite venues in Melbourne can include The Corner. Like it's just such a, it's a staple venue, I really feel like. And it's such a fucking great place to go see, go see a band, like even an international band, but you still have that, um, sort of that pub vibe that, uh, seems tends to get lost in venues that size. Um, and other than that, I, I really love the forum. Like the forum is a, is a great venue, but it's, you know, it's a theater. So yeah. very rare that you, I mean, maybe I go there like under 10 times a year to see massive bands. Like last time I was there, I went and saw DMAs. They sold out like three of them or something, mm. which is wild, but it's just, yeah, it's a beautiful venue. And it's, um, and it's funny because they chopped all the dicks off of all the statues there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, th- I can say I've only been to the Forum once, and that's to see Dropkick Murphys. And, like, the old bar, I've been there quite a few times, and it is, like, I'd say one is one of the most iconic venues to see, like, yeah. my most favourite bands, I'd say. Um, totally. I, it's still relatively young, too, as a venue. I mean, it's, it's been around for 10 years. Mm. Um, when you compare that to venues who are of an equal caliber, like the Tote or something, for example, Definitely. Um, it, uh, it it certainly stands up. Although it's you know it's you know twenty years younger than the Tote, for mm. example. Definitely. Um, but I really I really do think the way that it's rolling in another twenty years time, people are going to look back at the old bar and it's going to be at the same caliber like such an iconic venue that really housed and was a launching pad for so many great bands like Courtney Barnett and um you know King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard Camp Cope etc definitely it's really cool definitely considering clowns have gone from strength to strength and just recently toured with Foo Fighters where do you guys see yourselves going next ah uh, that's a that's a big question um I don't know like when we started this band honestly my one of my end goals was to sell out the Corner Hotel, mm. um, which we actually ended up doing last year for our List Again launch. And I found myself really lost after that because for eight years, or for seven years by that point, I just had this tunnel vision of if we sell out the toad, uh, sorry, if we sell out the corner, then we just, we've done it. Yeah. Um, and now we have done it, and I feel incredibly lost almost in the in the music stratosphere. I I've mm. needed to like rejig my goals, and it, it's I feel I feel really weird and lost. But in five years, I I really couldn't tell you. Um, you know, we're we're going to continue making records and continue making music and continue with the same attitude that we always have, which is you know we'll we'll tour it hard because we love playing and we love um, hanging out and being on the road. Yep. And if people listen to it, then that's fucking awesome. And if people don't, um, then, you know, that's fine as well because we've, you know, we haven't set out to, to be this band that, that everybody loves. Um, but, I mean, it could go one of two ways, really. I mean, in five years' time, if things keep keep on their steady incline, then who knows, maybe I'll be living in my own apartment in Fitzroy and, you know, being a, being a music wanker or if it, if it just plateaus or declines, then maybe I'll go back to working a sales job in a call centre or something. <laughs> so speaking of travelling, you guys are playing the upcoming Dead of Winter Festival. So is there anyone uh-huh. you guys are looking forward to catching up with there? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to um, to catch up with Frenzel, yep. given that we they, they almost offered us a touring apprenticeship back in 2016. We ended up doing like 22 shows with them. Yep. in the space of six weeks or something. Um, and I don't know, I'm going to pull up the pull up the lineup now because it was it's a bloody good one, isn't it? Oh, oh it is a great lineup. Okay. Um, give me one moment there. I mean, yeah, I mean, it'll be cool to hang out with our mates in Pagan as well. 
Mm. Um, of course, Bing Jang Lane, they're awesome. Goon on the Rocks. Um, the Cutaways as well. Mm. Big fan of the Cutaways. So with touring as well, so when you toured around with the Foo Fighters, did you have full access to Young Henry's beer and things like that? <laughs> to Young Henry's beer? Yeah. Uh, we did We did have a lot of beer. I don't think it was Young Henry's, though. I think it was, um, oh, it was Pure Blondes that night. Oh, yeah. Pure yeah. Blondes and, and Aperol Spritzes in our green room. Okay, cool. Because I thought they, like, I noticed they had their own Fooey beer, so I was like, oh, I thought that was... uh, they did too. Yeah, I thought... yeah. I didn't. I didn't get a sip of that, um, but I did notice that they had it. I had it at um, the after party at Cherry Bar. Yeah. I generally find that those those band beers are they're a great idea, but maybe sometimes there's a little bit too many hops in them. It's like the bands want them to be super alcoholic, and then you know it's, it's not it's not particularly my taste. But yeah. um, no, I, I didn't try the I didn't try the Philly beer, unfortunately. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet, but. I generally don't mind the Young Henry's beer, so... Yeah, I love Young Henry's beer, that natural yeah. lager and the new yeah. town. And the apple cider is awesome. Yeah, I tried it all. I won a few slabs of it last year when um, I supported um, the Rock Dogs a lot last year, so I kept winning slabs, so... Ah, cool. And if this makes print, then um, just make sure to let Young Henry's know that they can send a slab to my house. Definitely, definitely. Um... Um, another question, I really took to the film clip, Pickles, it kind of reminded me of, like, it was very striking, it reminded me of The Sopranos, and I noticed at the end you kind of looked very reprieved, like, so I didn't know if that was kind of like, because it was kind of over or the pain had stopped. Whose idea was that concept? Was it yours or somebody else's? Uh, I think it was almost uh, a whole band decision. Uh, you know, the song kind of plays on themes of, of dealing with substance abuse. And mm. I guess maybe the, the theme of water torture felt synonymous um, yeah. because, you know, there's, there's obvious, like, themes of pain and struggle in there. But also, um, you know, the, the concept or the theme of water um, having a cleansing effect as well yes. kind, of, kind of all seem to tie in nicely with one another. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was certainly an interesting day. <laughs> it took me like a couple of hours to kind of get my get my mind back into place. Mm. Um, but you know, it was it was actually really fun, and and that bit at the end where I'm smiling too, like that's a that's a natural thing. It wasn't um, it wasn't acting or anything like that because it it was just it was just kind of fun, even though I know it's a little bit distressing, particularly for family members of mine to watch or maybe even current fans. It does look pretty uncomfortable, and believe me, it was. That's, a, a, that's even real blood on my face, a lot of it, because Nikki, who's, who's in the clip from Pagan, um, mm. bashed me in the face accidentally with the with the wine bottle, and and that was real blood, like, spurting out of my eyebrow, which is great because it really helped me with, uh, with a bit of method acting and mm. saved a bit of money on makeup as well. Yeah, it was a pretty confronting video to watch, but it's definitely... You did a great job, like, of I, filming. I basically just tried to embody Mel Gibson in Passion of the Christ. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I nearly commented that, but I thought it's definitely, like, reminding me of Sopranos too, like, it was very real, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, let me assure you that the pain was certainly real. Definitely look like it. And I liked, <laughs> I, I like that you were smiling in the end, because it was, it kind of was a good way to end it, I think, like. yeah. That was, um, that as well, that end clip was just something that the editor put in. The, at the end of the clip, I, it was just supposed to be, supposed to be me just like breaking free and, and walking off looking in pain. But yeah, our friend Aiden decided to put that little spot in the end and it, we felt like it actually worked really well. And you're right, for anyone who's, um, who's got a strong enough stomach to make it all the way through to the end, it kind of gives them a, you know, gives them an idea that it was actually a bit of fun and that, you know, I didn't, I didn't get too, too beat up in the process. Yeah, I almost didn't have, but yeah, I got there. So, <laughs> um, because I'm. Well, thank you for being uh, one of the only. Yeah, I'm a very particular about Google searching all the, you know, everyone I interview, and Clans are definitely the most interesting bands I have ever Google searched. I must say, like. Really. Yeah. Did you get much of the band, or was it more just clowns? You know, doing stupid shit, hiding in gutters. 
there's like the most interesting I found is like one of the band members winning a t um, quiz show, winning twenty like twenty five thousand oh, yeah. dollars. That was the most interesting thing to put it band into fun to make albums and things like that. That was kind of cool. <laughs> That's that a, was, yeah, that was a fun time. Yeah, that was a great. That was a wild year. Yeah, and then to put it towards travel and to play with the Foo Fighters and heaps of great stuff. And then when I was talking to my partner about it, he goes, um, my partner plays for a band called the um, Krontburgers, and he goes, they supported us once, and I was like, how the tables have turned. <laughs> like, <laughs> so Yeah, it's pretty funny with the, whole, with the whole game show thing. I mean, you know, every band has a different method and in making a bit of coin. Some people go for government grants or play a shitload of shows, but I feel like that the uh, the game show route gets overlooked a bit too often. You know, it's a very real possibility. Definitely, definitely. You just, you just need to have a band member that basically has a Google search engine in their brain. Definitely. Which Johansson certainly does. Yes. And, yeah, did quite well. And he was smart enough to cash out when he when he did, like... Yeah. Not get too yeah. greedy, so did He's well. smart boy. Definitely is, definitely is. Um, so, after touring with the Foo Fighters, is there anything you guys took away from that experience? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that was a pretty... It's easily the biggest venue that we've played in, and it was pretty... Um, I guess maybe gratifying is the word that mm. we got to play it. Eddie had, I mean, I, I never ever thought when we started this band that we would get to do something like that. And I even remember going to see ACDC at, at the same venue, maybe only 18 months before the gig and Kingswood were supporting them. And I just remember thinking like, fuck, you know, that it's so cool that they, that they get to do something like that mm. because I just feel like clowns, you know, despite, finding modest measures of success here and there that it's not it's not really something that would probably pre present itself but you know proven wrong and we got to do it and it was it was pretty cool i mean by by that point we've done our fair share of touring and playing on a big stage like that kind of feels natural now to the band but i guess um it was really cool to make my mum and dad proud you know they yeah. got to read our band's name in the age or whatever and they thought that was pretty cool and at the end of the day, like the band is something that we we all do as as part time work, but it's not a it's not a full time full life sort of thing at the moment. Even though we love it to be, yeah. Um, but it's cool when you get little pieces like that that can that can make family members smile or whatever. Because you know the the other measures of success, like you know playing super high on the bill at Dead of Winter Festival or being on the cover of of the music or something, is is not you know. The, the family doesn't always recognise as measures of success. <laughs> yeah. Would you consider yourself famous and has it changed your world view in any way? Uh, I certainly wouldn't consider myself famous. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, it's a funny question because when I was a kid, I certainly would have thought any band that can sell out the corner would be considered famous mm -hmm. but I guess working out asses off and getting to that point has really um, really shown me that just because a band can sell out the corner does not constitute fame whatsoever like the the people who we've met who who really are famous um, you know it's it, it really is a testament to their character when they take the time to say hi or to come watch your band from the side of the stage like a couple of members of Foo Fighters did. Um, I guess the the only change in the view that I've had from, you know, playing festivals or playing gigs with, with massive bands like Fooies or whatever is that, you know, people people who play in bands and get the idea in their head that they're famous probably just become wankers you know like mm. everyone everyone's equal no matter if you're selling out a 60,000 capacity venue or you or you just you know pulling 100 people down to crowbar or whatever you mm. know everyone's everyone's equal and it's really good to keep a head on your shoulders and, and think about it that way um I, I really think um uh Frank Turner summed it up well in uh in his song Try This at Home where he says uh, there's no such thing as rock stars. There's just people that play music. Some of them are just like us and some of them are dicks. Yeah. 
definitely. Yeah. Um, it's um, true words have never been said. Definitely. I've definitely met a few dicks in my time too, especially in this job. So, um, so while you're touring and playing to massive crowds uh-huh. and going on stage and playing to like to 100 people, to 60,000 people, is there anything that you guys do just before you go on to perform, like to get yourself uh, sucked up? Yeah. I mean, it just kind of depends. Depends on the night, depends on how I'm feeling, you know. Usually, before a tour, I'll try and chill out as much as possible and maybe, you know, be social, but don't get, don't go out and party super hard, even if it's a friend's birthday or whatever, and just try and um, just try and relax. But by the end of the tour, you know, things get a little bit loose and a little bit rusty, but also the, the screws are well and truly tightened. So, you know, mm-hmm. maybe just uh, other day, you know, we just like to have fun. Yeah. So plenty of rest yeah. and hey, things I've got, like a, that. I've got another call coming through. Oh, Do you have any no more rest. questions? Um, yep, just one more quick random question because I always ask one random one. If right you on. could rename your street, what would you rename it? If I could rename my street? Yes. Um, I'd probably rename it uh, the street that our guitarist Will lives on, which is Boner Avenue, just because it would make my life just that little bit better. Every day when I walk out my door, look Lovely. up at the sign and think, Lovely. things are going to be okay. Lovely. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, it's been awesome to chat to you. And thank you so Anytime. much. Thank you. Um, you've been brilliant and thank you for putting up with my wonky questions. Oh, no worries. You've been brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.